The incident which occurred in May 2010 along the coast of Gaza, in that we have just discussed before, also raises the issue of humanitarian relief. The prohibition on starvation of the civilian population as a method of warfare, as well as the sieges and blockades, cannot be comprehensively addressed without saying some words on humanitarian relief. The law on that matter is quite complex. We will merely provide an overview of the general contours of that law. The key feature is that humanitarian relief is dependent upon the consent of the state where the population in distress is located. That state may refuse or accept the proposed humanitarian relief. Consent is thus the key and last word in that matter. There are nonetheless some limited situations in which IHL treaties oblige the relevant state to accept humanitarian relief. A first situation concerns belligerent occupations. According to Article 59 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, when the occupied population is insufficiently supplied, the occupying power must accept relief schemes by other states or impartial humanitarian organization. That includes not only the provision of consignments of foodstuffs, medical supplies and clothing, but also under Article 69 of Additional Protocol 1, the provision of bedding, means of shelter, other supplies essential to the survival of the civilian population of the occupied territory, and objects necessary for religious worship. A second situation concerns humanitarian relief for specific persons. Article 23 of the Fourth Geneva Convention obliges states to allow the free passage of all consignments of medical and hospital stores and objects necessary for religious worship which are intended only for civilians and also for all consignments of essential foodstuff, clothing and tonics intended for vulnerable people such as children or pregnant women. These are nonetheless specific situations in which states cannot oppose humanitarian relief. In all the other cases, consent remains the sole consideration. However, there is no increasing support for considering that consent cannot be refused on arbitrary grounds. This comes from the idea that primary responsibility of belligerents under IHL is to take care of the civilian population under their control. As a result, in case they are unwilling or unable to assume that responsibility, they must accept help offered by any impartial humanitarian organization. Some also argue that states are prohibited from abusing the right to reject aid. Therefore, states are obliged to accept relief operations, when the damage caused to the population is clearly disproportionate to the benefit stemming from the refusal to the relief. Lastly, it has been argued that the right to life, belonging to the population under human rights law, creates an obligation for the states concerned to allow humanitarian relief. Any refusal would amount to a violation of that right. In any case, when humanitarian relief does take place, the concerned state may retain control over the relief in order to verify that it is only distributed to the civilian population and does not benefit to the armed forces of the adversary. In addition, the relief personnel are subject to domestic laws and must take into account the local security requirements.